In this lesson, we'll learn about a very special kind of mixture, a solution. Most commonly, we encounter solutions of water, which are called aqueous solutions. We'll see what happens to substances when they dissolve in water and why some of these solutions conduct electricity. The following sections of chapter four will explore three different kinds of reactions, which most of which are solution-based. Precipitation reactions occur when two solutions are mixed and a solid product appears. These reactions are always in aqueous solution. Acid-base reactions involve the transfer of a spicy hydrogen from an acid to a base. These reactions are always in aqueous solutions. Oxidation reduction reactions involve the transfer of an electron from one element to another. These reactions are usually in aqueous solutions. This slide introduces some important vocabulary for solutions, summarized in the image with a blue border. A solvent is a liquid, commonly water. A solute is something that will dissolve, often a solid like an ionic salt. When a solute meets a solvent, it mixes evenly with the solvent to form a homogeneous mixture called a solution. This changes the phase of the solute. After salt dissolves in water, salt is no longer a solid. Instead, anything dissolved in water has the phase aqueous, abbreviated AQ. Aqueous solutions allow chemicals to mix together, making them common sites for reactions. Nearly every reaction in your body is an aqueous reaction. Water will be a key player throughout this chapter, as well as in organic chemistry and biochemistry. Water's amazing solvent properties come from its shape. Water is a polar molecule, meaning the oxygen end has a slight negative charge and the hydrogen end has a slight positive charge. You may have heard the mantra, like dissolves like. In other words, polar solvents dissolve polar substances. In other, other words, molecules with positive and negative portions dissolve compounds with positive and negative portions. On the other end of the spectrum, nonpolar things dissolve other nonpolar things. We'll be thinking a lot this chapter about whether something dissolves in water or not. If it does, we call it soluble. If it does not, we call it insoluble. There are two ways that soluble substances can dissolve in water, and these two ways make a big difference to their chemistry. If the substance separates into cations and anions, then it forms an electrolyte solution. This is the way salts and acids dissolve in water. When molecular substances dissolve, the molecules do not dissociate into ions. These form non-electrolyte solutions. Electrolyte versus non-electrolyte is bigly important. Let's see what it looks like visually. When salts dissolve, the cations and anions separate from each other. The negative anions in green on this image are surrounded by water molecules, which point their positively charged hydrogens toward the anion. The positive cations in purple are also surrounded by water molecules, but these molecules point their negative oxygen atoms at the cations. When non-electrolytes dissolve, such as this alcohol, methanol, they don't break apart into charged particles. They still play fun games with water called hydrogen bonding, but that's a discussion for a later chapter. It's very important to understand that salts dissociate, meaning break apart into aqueous ions. It's so important that chemists have invented a new way to write reactions to show that cations and anions separate in solution. The poorly named molecular equation still puts the ions next to each other, although it does change their phase from solid to aqueous. This does not reflect what happens in real life. No sodium ions are touching chloride ions in a salt solution. Instead, the more accurate equation is the ionic equation, 
which clearly shows sodium ions separating from the chloride ions. Although the molecular equation is faster to write, if you're a lazy chemist, the ionic equation is the truth. You will need to be able to write both types of equations for the lab and for exams in this class. Going back to molecules, when they dissolve, they stay together. There is only one way to write an equation for a molecule dissolving, which just shows the phase change from liquid or solid to aqueous. Many different molecules dissolve in water, like <clears throat> Many different molecules dissolve in water, like alcohols methanol and ethanol, along with nail polish remover acetone, and all sugars like glucose and sucrose. Did you know that pure water does not conduct electricity? This is because conductivity requires the movement of electrical charges. In pure water, there are no plus or minus charges, so conductivity cannot occur. A non-electrolyte solution, such as sugar water, also does not have charged particles, and these solutions will not conduct electricity either. However, salt solutions separate into cations and anions, which means salt water conducts electricity. Now, you may think that because pure water does not conduct electricity, you can bring your hair dryer into the bath. Mm, bad idea. Your skin naturally has enough salt on it to make a very conductive solution. Chemists have to use very expensive equipment to purify water enough that it will not conduct. As you might expect, the more ions in solution, the more conductive that solution will be. Notice the light bulb gets brighter with more ions in the solution. Different salts dissociate into different numbers of ions upon dissolving. Try practicing this by writing the net ionic equation for each of these dissolution reactions. How many total ions are created from each one? Then look at the picture in the bottom left. Which of these possible salts could lead to that picture? Keep in mind that polyatomic ions do not break apart into their individual atoms. They stay together as a charged polyatomic ion. You can check your work by checking that the charge is balanced and that conservation of mass is obeyed. Pause the video now and give it a try. Here are the solutions. <clears throat> sodium chloride dissolves into two ions, one sodium and one chloride ion. Magnesium chloride dissolves into three ions, one magnesium and two chlorides. Sodium sulfate also dissolves into three ions, two sodiums and one sulfate. Ammonium phosphate dissolves into four ions, three ammoniums and one phosphate. The picture shows a solution with twice as many one plus ions as two minus ions, which matches the sodium sulfate solution. As we eventually discuss acids, we'll increase the complexity of our solutions understanding. One category of acids are strong acids, which dissociate completely into their ions. Even though these are technically molecules, they act like soluble salts in solution, forming strong electrolyte solutions. On the other hand, weak acids only partly break up into cations and anions. These form weak electrolyte solutions, which do not conduct electricity very strongly. 